live from the WesternUnion.com VIP Lounge. I guess I could have stayed, ah. but I wanted Sorry. to do another entrance. <laughs> we like to keep it dramatic. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome Hello to San again. Francisco. Hi. How do you like the Bay Area? I love this place. It's awesome. Yeah. What do you love we most about it? Well, it's, I don't know, it's like I said yesterday, I went and bought this jacket at a store called Stuff. Right. Which is like vintage stuff from the 60s and 80s with all these like, just, I don't know, cool dudes working in there and it was all furniture and like all weird music playing and then... I'm paying for this, and there's a woman standing outside going like, I hate you! Ah, I'm just kidding. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then something about, there's all these like wackos everywhere, and it's like everybody is just kind of like who they are and hanging out. I like it. And that was <laughs> probably like a Monday afternoon. It feels a lot like, I don't know, it feels like a lot like Europe. I don't know. It's just yeah. like very, yeah. It was, pretty, it was like 9 o'clock last night, I think. Okay, so it was at night time. Yeah. That's expected. Yeah. Now, did the jacket um, make way for anything else that you had to purchase? So did you have to then go out and get the earrings as well? Did you already have the earrings, I had the earrings on your already. purse? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But there's a dress that goes with this, actually. But yeah. it was a little too rowdy to wear today, I thought. So. What is rowdy for you? <laughs> That's my next question. Well, I mean... What made it rowdy? It was just that it was like a... Um, I don't know. It felt a little bit too like an S&M kind of dress. All right. And... I don't know, just on a Tuesday. We don't it's have to Tuesday, go past right? that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Certain dresses you just can't sit in. Let's be That's honest. That's also another thing. I could not sit in that dress. Yeah. So the I jacket we had to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. We were actually watching some of your videos, and there are some topless scenes, which mm -hmm. I love. He makes fun of me all the time. Sometimes I like to go to this place called Harbin Hot Springs, and it's a clothing optional resort. And in America, really? people are crazy conservative and weirded out by that. But I was like, she'll get it. That's amazing. You're from Sweden. So you can choose. You can, you can, if you want to go naked, you can. You can. Yeah. You don't know anyone, so no. it's much better. She also likes to go to drum circles and make out with her yogi. So. <laughs> you know, when in Rome. When well, in that Rome. sounds great. Yeah. Do you think America's <laughs> super like conservative with nudity? Because I, um, I think you're so cool with it, and I love that about you. Thank you. Well, you're it's welcome. weird. It's a combination because you have like a, like all these rules, and everybody's like, it's stupid, we know. But then I'm like, well, who makes these rules if everybody thinks it's stupid? That's the only right. thing I'm thinking. <laughs> what about your parents? But Do they like, are they weirded out by anything? I actually or? talked to my mom yesterday. It was like um, um, Mother's Day in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So I, I I was uh, I called her good daughter nice um Actually, I called her at nighttime because they're nine hours ahead, so I forgot about that, and she was a little pissed now, off. Now, by I call, do you, use, do you use the phone? Do you text? Do you FaceTime? I FaceTime her. FaceTime, yeah. nice. Okay. So I called her, and she was like, what's going on? What's wrong? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> what's you're sleeping. Wrong? Happy Mother's Day. Uh, <laughs> no. no, but she said, like, oh, I'm seeing you're supporting this whole Free the Nipple campaign now. I'm like, yeah, Mom. <laughs> it's, it's my new thing. She's like, hmm. Yeah, I approve. It's okay. Well, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> it's fine. They then. I think it's probably weirder for my dad. He doesn't comment on it, which I also am very happy that he doesn't. Yeah, it no, would be nobody a very wants weird, that call. strange conversation <laughs> to have with him. Um, but I mean, they, I mean, I don't know. They all walk around naked in the house when I was a kid. So Really? Never, yeah. Oh my gosh. I was naked all the time when I was a kid. I don't think it's a strange thing. Yeah. <laughs> if you're around it more, it's, it's yeah. not weird. Yeah. Does your dad follow your mom's lead with these things? Like if your mom thinks it's okay, then... Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. No, they can be. They can have very different opinions. Yeah. Uh, my mom is a is a um, therapist, so okay. I think she kind of is a little bit more like, I understand you. I don't like it, but I understand you. Tell me how and this makes you feel. My, <laughs> my dad is more just like a no, no. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> so he lays the rules down. Your mom is more empathetic. Um. Yeah, but she also makes him change his mind. So he'll he'll make a rule and then she'll talk to him and then he comes back and he's like. All right, I talked to mom, <laughs> and I guess I'm gonna have to accept this. This is the way you are. Women have <laughs> the power. That. We yeah. really do. Yeah, <laughs> my mom does. She's tiny, but she's powerful mind. <laughs> is it true that nobody in your family is like a musical person? No. Well, you know, I've said this, and uh, not my immediate family, but my aunt actually called me up. She was really angry because we used to sing a lot, like with her family. I was like, yeah, but no one can sing. <laughs> like, no one in your family can sing. <laughs> And she's <laughs> which was not popular either. <laughs> Don't they call that a family reunion? Right. I'm pretty sure. It's that drunk Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> so you were the first one to really like say, I actually love doing this. I want to do yeah, this. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of, my, my whole family is very much like everyone's very um, doing well. Like they're, they're uh, you know, ambitious people and, and uh, working hard. And my, my cousin's uh, becoming a judge. Um, uh, my other cousin's a filmmaker. My brother works in... Uh, banking you know they're very like mm -hmm. uh, my dad has his own company very forward people very academic so i think i was the first one to kind of step out of that and just go like i'm gonna go the 
uh, artistic route, sure. and mm -hmm. that's scary for people who don't do it themselves. I feel like because do they to come them to your concerts? Like, yeah, yeah, no, they do. They're very proud and supportive. I think they're just worried, but yeah, <laughs> I can understand why. Can you still walk around back home in Sweden without issue, or do you get recognized on the street? I can walk around in the day. Like people will still recognize me, and but uh -huh. in Stockholm at least they're very like they'll leave you alone. Right. Um, very private people. Um, but if anyone's drunk, then not so much. Right. And it's like, it's you! <laughs> Whoa! And then, yeah. <laughs> I love the album Queen of the Clouds. Everybody knows uh, habits, everybody knows talking body. Mm. Uh, there was a song on there that struck me, and I wanted to ask you mm? about it, called Moments. Yeah. Um, the, the lyrics on there were amazing. Of course, I, I pulled up a lyric video on YouTube, and all of a sudden <laughs> I became like a 14-year-old boy again, and I was crying. Oh, that's so sweet. Let's talk about that song for mm? one second, because it... it you obviously reach out and touch your fans with that song. Yeah. It's very vulnerable. It is it is vulnerable. It's like one of the the ones that are like the most where I am the most vulnerable. Right. I think um it's just it's kind of about not not feeling like about not being perfect sure. and kind of still trying to tell yourself that you uh you're good anyway. Right. Um even when you have your bad days and you mess up and all that stuff. And I think it was I wrote it when um I mean because it's part of like I compared it to how I kind of feel when when I start to really like fall in love with someone and you're like yeah, this has been fun and exciting, but now I kind of have to show you all my bad sides too, and I hope you're still gonna like me when you see them, and that's scary. That's called moving in together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I wait for a long time before I let that happen. <laughs> uh, but then also for me, it was very much when I started, you know, being an artist and like getting all this new kind of attention, right. where people care a lot about more than the music, because I was a songwriter before and wrote songs for, for artists, and it was like I still got to do what I love, but I wasn't in the spotlight, and then. Once you step out in the spotlight, people focus on a lot of other things than sure. the music, and it was kind of, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I can handle all the, you know, that people throw at me, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, some, if you have a bad day, like you just you got to stay away from the YouTube comments. <laughs> really. Yeah, stay off <laughs> social yeah, media. Yeah, but it's kind of like I think that's the whole like also a thing behind the song is that it's like I have to tell myself that I am good enough, even though a lot of other people right. don't agree. And then there's a lot of people that do agree with that, which is awesome. It makes me very very happy, but. It's sometimes you just kind of focus on the negative. It's so easy to get stuck in like sure. thinking about it. There's a, there's a lyric in the song where it says uh, uh, something like, I'm not the prettiest, but I have my moments. Yeah. <laughs> so over the last couple of years, it's been a whirlwind for you, right? Mm. It's like zero to 100 miles an yeah, hour, it feels yeah, like. Totally. Give me like one moment, whether it was here in the States or somewhere worldwide, where, where you felt like you made it, where you did feel your prettiest at that particular moment. I think... It must have been other, there's so many, you know? <laughs> uh, but there's a few now. But I think it was probably when we played, um, like our first sold out show here in, it was in Orange County, mm -hmm. actually. And I think it was around like a little over a thousand people. And it was the first show that it was like, it was my show. And I was like, is anybody gonna come? And they're like, it's sold out. I'm like, what? But are they still gonna come? <laughs> like, I don't understand. <laughs> and and so, and then, you know, just singing habits and having like, just re putting the mark out and everyone just singing every word. And I think that's when I was like, oh my God, is this really happening now? This is so cool. What um, has the feedback yeah. been for that song? Because I remember with the first hearing the lyrics, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so edgy for our station. Yeah. But then I love it that because you're putting it out there that, you know, this is what happens sometimes. So yeah. what has the feedback been? That's usually the feedback feedback I mean there's a lot of like you need Jesus and then there's a lot of uh, <laughs> and then there's a lot of like this is my life right now this is so how I'm feeling and I don't think that everyone means you know just like yeah I you know I'm also staying high all the time it's more like I am trying to numb the pain in the best way that I can by just maybe acting like an idiot in any kind of way so I think everybody's been there both you know girls and guys everyone can relate to that sure. feeling mm -hmm. yeah. I know we have to wrap this up I do have one mm -hmm. question when you do go out and 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 get numb or party or do dumb things. When you come back and you're, everybody's at your house, I'm sure at this point, because <laughs> you're probably the most famous one in the group, maybe. <laughs> what's your go-to snack? You're hungry, it's the middle of the night. Yeah, you what's just your got munchie? done. Mm. What's your go-to meal? What's your go-to snack? Since I started touring here uh -huh. is the uh, white cheddar popcorn. Oh, the I can oh, seriously girl. eat. Is that we smart had, like, food? What is that? Yeah, smart Pi food. Yeah. Pirate's booty? Is that I, the same Pirate's thing? booty I love too, but then yeah. I found these these uh, um, white cheddar smart food popcorn, yeah. which was like, we, I think um, one of my fans uh, gave one to me. Then we were going to drive from... Um, Philly to DC, I think yeah. it was. And it was like a, those like two, 250 gram bags. And I was like sitting eating. And then yeah. by the time we get to DC, I'm like, oh, there's did anybody no else eat this bag? And they're like, yeah, I had a, a little, and me too. I'm like, 
I just eat this whole bag by myself. I didn't no, even I'm notice with you. I ate it. Yeah. I think we're <laughs> so. connected because I I flew to Seattle for a weekend to watch the 49er game and uh, I fell asleep in my hotel on a Friday after a rough night and mm -hmm. woke up I was spooning a bag of smart food <laughs> from the mini bar. So I'm, I wish I Thank could you. make that up. Thank you. That means you're an official American now. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Welcome to America. Welcome, Tovlo. <laughs> Tovlo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Grab the album, Queen of the Clouds. Ladies and gentlemen, Tovlo, Tovlo. thank you for hanging out with Star 101.3. Thank you. Thank you, babes, for watching. I'm Tovlo. Be sure to check out more exclusive interviews and live performances here on 1013.com. you jump